go down. Um, all right, so yeah, again, noble gases are stable. And one thing I just want to throw in there about that is um, how many valence electrons do uh, the noble gases have? Remember, you can count. One, two, skip the transition. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight is the, is the goal. All elements want eight. It's called a complete octet. When elements get a complete octet, they're happy. They don't react. They become very stable. So that's something you don't have to know now. I'm just throwing it out there. We're going to talk much more about that down the road. Um, so anyways, that's, that's that. Um, so now what I want to do is uh, uh, write down properties of metals and nonmetals. And then we got to talk about this thing called a nuclear symbol. And then we'll talk about each group. There's a few things I want to talk about each group. And that should be it. Um, but I do want to have time at the end here to, to do some, uh, some demos here. And then whatever we don't get to, we'll do tomorrow. So here we go. Let's do uh, metals on the left side and then non-metals over on the right. Let's talk about properties of, properties of each. You guys can just rattle them off to me. We just went over on the homework, so it should be easy. Go ahead, just yell them out here. So how about metals first? Luster. What else? Malleable. We're going to define that. What else? Conducts what? Electricity. Yep, conducts electricity. Conducts electricity and what? Heat. And heat. And there's one more thing that we need to uh, put down. Well, there's a couple more, but it starts with a D. It was in the book. What? Quack. Quack, quack. Ductile. Right. Nothing to do with ducts at all, but ductile. And metals in general are hard, okay? They're hard. They usually have strong forces of attraction. So it's hard to break them up, hard to, hard to melt them, okay? Strong forces being hard to melt. Um, so let's define these two words, malleable and ductile. You understand what this means, I think. Basically just means electricity can flow through it, heat, energy can flow through it. You know what luster means? What's malleable? The ability to bend. The ability to bend, yes. Um, that's how we all understand it, and that's completely fine, but I'm not gonna write that. But you're, you're right but there's a technical definition. Malleable means it can be flattened into sheets. Flattened into sheets. What does that mean? It means it bends, you keep hitting it until it flattens. That means it's bend bendable, pliable. A lot of words we used the other day. I'm not even sure if that's how you spell flatten. Um, ductile. I always think of Play-Doh when I talk about ductile. Who's, who's eating Play-Doh? Probably. Come on. You haven't tasted it? No one's tasted Only a bunch of liars in here. What did it taste like? Do you remember, does anyone remember? It's really salty. Super salty. Right. You didn't wash your hand. Yet yeah, you know it's salty. It was play though that we had to make for a summer project. All right. Uh, so, did anyone ever have uh, when you were a kid? Or maybe now you go home and play with Slate. I don't know. But a little uh, spaghetti thing or whatever. You push it in and it comes out. Okay. That's what ductile is. It's forming metal into little thin strips. What do we call those? Little spaghetti. <laughs> right. What do we call metal that's very thin, round, more pliable? Very thin. Metal. On spools. Wire. 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 Ductiles, when you form wire. That's what metals can do. You form wire. Just makes me think of the spaghetti thing in Play-Doh. All right? What about non-metals? They're dull. What else? Brittle. Breakable, right. You say brittle. Do not conduct. I'm just going to write do not conduct. We can write electricity and heat. It doesn't conduct either. So I'm going to make sure I'm not forgetting something here. Oh. Um, I also want to add here, they're mostly solids, right? Metals, there's only one liquid, mercury. So I'm just going to write solids, whereas non-metals can be all three. Well, mostly solids and gases. There is one liquid, bromine, right? So I guess I won't put the liquid down. So there's a lot of gases that are non-metal and some are solids, okay? So what is this? This right here tells me that these are weaker than these. 
See, solid particles are really close together, very uniform, they just vibrate. Gas particles are very far apart, constantly moving around. So if the particles are really far apart, that means they're not attracted to each other. Okay? Think about two strong magnets come together, very strong, think that concept strong. But two weak magnets, you bring them near each other and maybe let go, they'll just fall. They won't, they won't be attracted to each other. So things that are far apart, gas particles are far apart, weak forces, weak substances. Nonmetals tend to be weaker, easier to melt. Metals, much harder to melt. They're harder, um, solids, okay? But the solids here are actually way stronger than the solids here, for the most part. There's a lot of, a lot of stuff I tell you in Regents Chem that I have to stop, I can't go in any further because it'll confuse you and it's not on the Regents. But if you take AP Chem, you're gonna see some of the stuff you learn, a lot of kids say that I'm lying to you. When they get the AP, they're like, you lied to us all year. Not really, I just don't tell you the full truth. Um, so I, I, I get frustrated and I always tell my Regents kids, sometimes I say things and it's not always true, but if I go in detail, we're gonna never get through all the material and you won't, you won't do well in the Regents. So this, some of these solids are pretty strong, but in general, the concept here, metals are stronger than non-metals. Usually kids have a pretty, pretty easy understanding of that, okay? Um, all right, so that's the properties of metals and non-metals. All right, let's talk about this thing called nuclear symbol, and then we'll talk about uh, group one, group two, some of the random other elements, and we should have time um, to at least do a couple things here. All right, so a nuclear symbol. All right, you guys uh, have your reference table, take those out please. Take those out. All right. And I think I will give you this worksheet. I copied it. I might as well give it to you. I don't want to waste the paper. Right? I might as well get this in. I could. But I'll recycle it You guys can recycle it after you do it. Um, all right. So go to your periodic table. Someone tell me, what is the atomic number for carbon? Raise your hands. Atomic number for carbon. Carbon. Try again. Right. So first of all, it's C, right? So everybody writes C. Atomic number six. Very good. Where does that number go in the box? Or where do you find it in the box? Like top left, bottom left, top right, bottom right, right? Try again. Oh, you don't have to, do you have your reference tables out? Get those out, please. I'll come back to you. Bottom left. Bottom left. So we write six in the bottom left. Okay. Atomic mass. Um, Hannah, what's the atomic mass of carbon? 12.011. Can you round that to a whole number for me? 12. So that 12 is called the mass number. Let me say that again. The atomic mass is all the decimal points. 12.011. That's called the atomic mass. But the mass number is the rounded version of that. So if I say mass number the rest of the year, mass number, I want a whole number. Okay. So mass number of carbon is 12. Now where in the box, Hannah, do you find that 12? Top left. So we put it here, top left. That's called a nuclear symbol. It has the mass number on top, atomic number on the bottom, elemental symbol next to them. And I'm gonna number, or label that for you. Here's the atomic number, and here's the mass number. It's not called the atomic mass, because the atomic mass has all the decimal points. We'll learn about that later. All right? I, uh, I should have told you about this the other day, and I forgot. So I, it doesn't really matter, but... Um, I want to make sure I went over that today. So let's just get a couple more uh, practice examples here so you understand how to write a nuclear symbol. So we'll do one together and then I'll have you do one on your own. So let's do uh, chlorine, CL. Let's, let's put the two numbers there. Mass on top, atomic number on the bottom. Who could tell me what number goes on top for CL? How about Dylan? What number goes on top for CL, the mass number? CL's over on the top right-ish. 35, good, 35 goes on top. Now I picked CL because kids get confused with CL. 
CL is 35.4527. So a lot of kids say, well, it's 0.45. The five rounds a four to a five. And the five rounds a five to a six. Don't do that. Just look at the tenths, okay? So 35.4 stays at 35. So that's the mass number of CL on the chart, 35. What's the atomic number? Kieran. 17. 17. That's the nuclear symbol for CL. Okay, you guys do one on your own. Give me the nuclear symbol for iron. Uh, Michaela, what's the symbol for iron? That's, that's the trick. I tricked you. That's iridium. Iron starts with an F. And ends with an E. FE, yes. Iron is FE, in case you were confused. So go ahead, do the nuclear symbol. And then we'll stop because I want to play with chemicals. We can blast through. I can just have a little bit left. It appears to be two pages, but it's it's not two pages. We'll go quick tomorrow after the quiz. All right, who can give me the two numbers? Effie, who can give me the two numbers? Again, this is called nuclear symbol. Go ahead, Michaela. Uh, 56 and 26. Good, 56, 26. Very good. And believe it or not, by the end of the year, you'll have a lot of these memorized. Okay, a lot of these memorized. I can remember a lot of the masses and atomic number. Obviously, I teach it, but you guys will, will be, won't be far behind. Um, so I want to show you a couple things here. You can put everything away. Uh, this worksheet, due tomorrow. So we got the quiz tomorrow. We'll go over this worksheet real fast. And definitely finish the notes on the periodic table. They're all sticking together. If you have any extras, just leave them back there somewhere. I'm going to. All right, let me show you a couple things here. So um, this is tin. I just want to show you what some metals look like. This is tin, okay? Kind of shiny, kind of got a little like gold haze on it. At the end of class, if you want to come up and look at any of these posters, you can. This is tin. This is zinc. Okay? So you can see how, how hard it is, right? It looks kind of grayish. This is lead shot. This is lead. Don't touch it with your hands. Not good for you, but that's lead. Darker. Very dense. Very dense. Um, here's the gallium. I don't want to get it out right now, but tomorrow we'll do that. Um, oh, and then this thing. What's this? What's in here? Sulfur, right? Just wanted to show you what sulfur actually looks like too. All right, so now the fun stuff. There's magnesium. We'll play with that tomorrow. Let's, uh, let's do this. Come on back. I think we have time for this. Okay, get, uh, get your glasses.